Tad, talk a little bit about the day that you were introduced as the CEO of the Rockets and kind of what that was like for you, and then also how you handled it, because you were essentially stepping up and saying, you know, that you were they were being told, this is the guy. What do you do at that moment? Well, at that moment, the first thing is I can remember the exact moment Mr. Alexander called and said, I'm naming you CEO. We were at a, my wife and I, Janice, were at a function, um, actually a season ticket holder function where I had just been speaking. And he called me in the parking lot and he said, congratulations. Um, she immediately started crying because she was so happy and so proud. I started crying because I realized the gravity of the situation. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, you then, then it kind of takes a different tone because then as the CEO, you need to have the vision and you need to have the courage and you need to have the, um, the understanding of where you're going and what you want to accomplish. Now, in my case, you know, I certainly do that in concert with the owner because ultimately it's his, it's his call. But, you know, we have a very good relationship and I know that um, we're on the same page relative to what we're trying to accomplish. So I had a good idea of what we needed, and what we needed was stability, and what we needed was a clear path and a clear understanding of who we wanted here. And if you didn't want to be here, or if you didn't want to um, basically live the behaviors and live the culture that we wanted to create, then this was going to be the place for you. And that's not bad. It's just, you know, organizations take shape and they change and people change, and it's time to find something new. So. Over the course of the first staff meeting and then a couple after that, um, I made it clear, you know, I think we have a fantastic staff. I think we have a unique opportunity with the team that we have and with the talent that we have and with the market that we have that we can do something very special in our space, not only in the NBA but in the sports marketing and the entertainment world. So uh, I basically put it out there and said, okay, I challenge everybody. I, I want you to understand, these are the people we're looking for. This is the leadership um, that we're looking for from our employees and from our key employees to move the needle and to bring us forward. And if you're not prepared to do that, if you're not prepared to be accountable for your performance, if you're not passionate about what you do and you're not willing to put in the hours and, and willing to kind of put the, you know, the blood and sweat on the line, then this isn't the place for you. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's just time to find something else to do. And I think for the most part, once that message gets sent and once everybody realizes that you're going to be consistent in that message as you go forward, then it becomes a much healthier organization. A lot of the doubt goes out of the organization. People who may have been waiting for kind of that message or waiting for direction line up and they, get, and they then perform at a higher level. Um, and people who may be fighting that a little bit fall out. And we've had some turnover, and I think we've had healthy turnover. You know, I talk to our HR group about it all the time. You look at, uh, it's kind of like forced turnovers and unforced errors, right? Right. Um, we've had some forced turnovers, and we've had some unforced turnovers. But I think when you look at them all combined, uh, it's been very healthy for the organization. We've got a better idea and a better plan on where we're going right now than I believe we've had certainly since I've been here. Yeah, and I think that's one of the myths that if you have people leave your organization, your staff, that there's a problem. And most of the time, if it's handled in a, in a way that's done with grace and respect for the individual, that's one of the indications of a really healthy organization that's going after whatever they're supposed to be doing. For us as a church, it's the vision God's given us. For you as the Rockets, it's what, you know to, to compete for championships and to be a force in the community. That's your vision. And if you're going after that tooth and nail, there are going to be people who don't share that vision, and they shouldn't be here for them or for you. But it's part of that. It's part of that healthy organization, not just growing and not just making money, but being a healthy place to work, and and use whatever gifts and talents you've got. Yeah, and you know it's not hard. We all a lot of times we overthink this stuff. You know, you can read all the management books, and you can you can watch all the CNBC CNBC shows you want, but at the end of the day, it's about, okay, you know, where are we going? How are we going to get there? And who's going to line up and who's going to lead? And, you know, you have to, as a CEO or as a pastor, you have to say, okay, this is where we're going. And this is how I believe we should get there. But now I need all of you to help 
to make sure that we get there. Now, there may be different ideas of, okay, maybe we should do this or maybe we should do this. And they're all, you know, some of them could be very right, some of them could be wrong, but as long as you take it into the context of everybody's got a voice and they're participating in that path, as long as you know where you're going, it's okay. Because everybody then everybody voice, feels but better. Not everybody has a vote. Not everybody has a vote, and there's nothing wrong with that. You know, fairness is you know the right to be heard, but that doesn't mean you have the right to make the final decision. Ultimately, there's somebody in every organization that makes the final decision. Who's responsible? And accountable. Right. And so those are things as leaders where we need to really be careful. Of, you know, I'm going to be consistent. And this is why I'm going to be consistent because it's in the best interest of the organization.